you have in a very short period of time become um, a fan favorite within the Around the NFL podcast because we like coaches that kind of keep it real, and it seems like one of the reasons why you've been a breath of fresh air and why the Browns kept you around is that you bring that sensibility uh, to, to the team, and, and I feel like that's welcome, and it seems like the players that respond to it. Yeah, I think it's amazing when you just kind of tell the truth, isn't it? That's like the, the thing. We should try that. Yeah, hell, somebody should. Um, <laughs> in today's society, I mean, you never know. You've got, either got to be politically correct or you got to blow smoke up people's tails mm. to get anywhere. And, you know, it's good that, you know, hell, it's good I'm in Cleveland because I feel like uh, we kind of get along with the city and, and the town, the community, uh, and the Browns organization. You know? It says something about the organization that they allow you to be yourself at a time when a lot of the job is image and putting yeah. that image out there and being polished yeah. and you're allowed to just be yourself. Yeah, and I think that was the thing I kept hearing after I got the job, you know, from uh, everybody from ownership to people within the organization. And, and uh, you know, I think I had a lot of support to get the job within the organization in general. Hmm. It could have been the janitor or the <laughs> people in the kitchen. But I think those people are important, too. And mm -hmm. um, everybody has a role to play. And, and when you make uh, everybody feel that way, then, of course, you're going to have their support because not everybody does that. But I do think they have a, a significant role in what we're trying to get accomplished. Do you get that sense after a, a year of being in Cleveland? You mentioned that you kind of vibe with the fans and it works that well. Like, do you, are, do you started to understand how you hold all of these people's kind of – broken hearts in your hand like mark yeah. here you we were talking yeah. before the show as a big time browns fan like how much you mean to me because they're 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 like afraid to love again but i think they're finally yeah. opening <laughs> up i've heard that before like not from browns fans just in general <laughs> but uh, the the thing i would say is with the cleveland browns fans and the people that have been fans their whole life um it's very similar to I played football at the University of Alabama, so I know what passion is all about. Um, and it's very similar and probably uh, even more so than in, in Alabama. I, I'm going to get killed in Alabama for saying that, but, um, you know, the passion. And Now, when, when you have passion for things like that, you can have great successes. I mean, hell, you'd think we won the Super Bowl and we were 7-8-1. and one. <laughs> They had struggled so long, yeah. and uh, hopefully those days are behind us. But we've got a lot of work ahead of us um, to get there because the expectations are so high now. The thing I find so unusual as a fan that goes back to the 80s, the drive, the fumble, all the heartbreak, and essentially everything that happened since the team came back after the move uh, to Baltimore is just that there is a competent quarterback. It has been one sideshow after the next. Uh, Brandon Whedon getting lost under American flags. Like all sorts of stuff that you just cannot <laughs> believe is happening to quarterbacks. Did that and really happen? It oh, yeah. did. It did. <laughs> yeah. Trapped under the big you should, yeah. you should look it up on YouTube. Oh, it's yeah. one of the great NFL Actually, moments don't. of this decade. Don't Keep look that juju away That's from the Browns at this point. <laughs> For you, though, having been there with Baker from the first minute that he was with Cleveland, was there a moment where before any of us realized, you thought, wait a minute, this guy's got it going on? Yeah, I think when you saw him practice, I mean, just in general, just throwing the ball. Um, you know, I, I don't know how much you can teach accuracy. In it. Like, I'm sure there's some guru out there that can do it, all right? Or at least they can tell you that they'll do it. <laughs> I've worked with some of those that will tell you they can make them accurate, but it didn't work for, well, not gonna, it didn't work for some people. We can think of some uh, examples, yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. Just look at Arizona. So, um, <laughs> but, it, you know, but at the end of the day, when he picks up a football, he's very accurate with the football. And you saw that initially. It doesn't matter if he's warming up or throwing uh, routes on air or, or whatever the case. He's accurate. Um, and that's – I don't think you can teach that Is that – I mean, it's making it too simple. But when it comes to the quarterback skill set, accuracy is more important than having a cannon for an arm, just the ability to put the ball where it needs to be. Yeah, because I think from the time that, uh, you know, the arm strength sometimes gets overblown from the standpoint of when he decides to throw the ball – to a certain receiver, and the receiver gets the ball in his hands, that's the time that it takes to get there. Now, you can do that by arm strength if you're accurate, or you can do it by, like, processing the information and and uh, seeing it come open before it actually mm -hmm. is open. So it's all about the timing that the, the ball needs to get there from when the quarterback decides to throw it, 
not necessarily starts his action, but decides to throw it and it ends up in the receiver's hands is the time that I think is more crucial than arm strength. Would you have a problem after this interview if I were to take your phone and text <laughs> Baker Mayfield just some of my <laughs> personal thoughts about him? Could I yeah, do that? no, okay. not at all. Okay. Yeah, we'll do that. <laughs> yeah. He's okay. actually just down the road, so you can go see him in person. I love it. Uh, Mark's about to faint. <laughs> Freddie, um, where were you? <laughs> Never love again, right? <laughs> That's, always, That's always sad. Where were you when you found out it was official, Freddie Kitchens' offense was going to have Odell Beckham Jr. on it, and what was your reaction? Uh, I was sitting in the draft – we call it the draft room. We were sitting in the draft room, you know, talking to all the parties involved. So, um, mm. you know, so sitting there in the middle of uh, everything, I guess. So you – and I imagine for you, it's a slam dunk. It's like, go get this guy. Was there – I mean, was there any way, once the, it became possibility that you guys were going to pull back, would, could there have been – some type of terms in terms of the trade that you would have said that's too much or the opportunity to get Odell Beckham was just too great to pass up no matter what. I don't I don't know what would have happened yeah. for us to, you know. At the end of the day, you know, it was a thing that was presented to us and mm. we were able to do What it. was the John, reaction John. right afterwards? Was it like a draft? Because sometimes when you like, you know, you have the cameras on draft day and they show the, the Jones family and everything and the player, you know, that they really want fought them. And they're like really doing some like white guy high fives. They're getting all like really <laughs> fired up. Like, where was that the reaction when you find out you finally here. get it? <laughs> He's about, um, yes. No, it's like, you know, John, he, you know, John's very good in those like situations. So it was kind of fun for me to sit and watch him work and communicate with other GMs uh, around the league and and how the back and forth goes. It's almost like a uh, car auction or something. You hmm. know, just, it's just it's very unique and uh, to show see the respect that, that the two men had for each other as as men and, and put a deal together like that. It was just it was really my first time of experiencing it on a personal level like that. All right, Freddie, it's time for the speed round. Okay. Are you mm -hmm. ready for this? <laughs> Speed in my name has not been. <laughs> <laughs> That's Ricky Hollywood. Uh, She's our producer. She's going to hit the music, and it, it, we're going to fly. Techno music or what? what no, it'll be a little bit more palatable. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite athlete growing up? Michael Jordan. Mm. Best bar food? Uh, wings. <laughs> Better vintage MTV program, singled out or remote control? Don't know either one of them. Ah. <laughs> Netflix and chill or hot night on the town? Uh, net, uh, at home. <laughs> being, starting, <laughs> being starting quarterback of a prestige college football powerhouse. That was probably fun. It was at times. <laughs> Is LeBron allowed to be a Browns and Cowboys fan? No. Come on. Mm, Thank you. I like that. If you fumble out of the end zone, it's a turnover. That's dumb, right? Uh, yes. Mm. <laughs> be honest, you wish you had more screen time on Hard Knocks. A little no. more pop. A little more pop. Right <laughs> Come on. I did, I did enough. <laughs> over under Baker Mayfield MVP awards before 2030. One and a half is the over under. Oh, wow. Oh, I'm, not, I don't, I'm not into predictions. That's the over. <laughs> <laughs> Who will sit on the Iron Throne? <laughs> uh, Baker. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Worst demise, shark attack or elevator malfunction? Oh, uh, shark attack. <laughs> Greatest oh, yeah. meat product. Greatest meat product? Uh, ribs. There you go. Madonna, overrated, underrated, properly rated. Uh, underrated. Mm. Ooh, I like that. Is it time to believe in Cleveland? Uh, yes. Good he answers. He did it. That wasn't too bad, right? Yeah, no, no. That you never saw it singled out. Jenny McCarthy, Chris Hardwick, da mm. dating show, 1993. That's like <laughs> right in your college <laughs> yeah. glory days. Right in the wheelhouse, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. well, you were busy. Yeah. All right, Freddie, thank you so yeah. much for joining us. I know you're a busy guy and a man in demand, so coming on our little podcast is a thrill for all of us, but especially Mark. Yeah. <laughs> Thank <is> you. <laughs> well, this is fun, fellas. I appreciate y'all having me. All right, best really of luck. Nice. Freddie Kitchens.